Hello, you wonderful people out there, and welcome in the next episode of Fortress Camelot. And unfortunately, last episode I lied to you. I said we are going to dress up the ri the, the bridge already, but uh, we didn't <laughs> um, because I, I I you know I it it was so long ago that I um uh, did all this. Well, it wasn't that long ago, but I was playing like ten hours in two days or I don't even know how that exactly was but um, it was a lot of a lot of hours I put into the game in a very short amount of time and I, I didn't really know when I did cut what because I I did cut the videos a little bit different from what I built in because I was jumping between projects uh, a lot I mean projects within the Fortress Camelot I have to say because I was jumping between that building kind of the rafting area the bridge and you know I was jumping back and forth and uh, that was a bit confusing to watch actually so I changed a bit of the footage um, to make it a bit more enjoyable for you to watch and to follow actually what I'm doing so um, this is now the already pre-rendered footage of the bridge where everything is in one simple go um, which is fairly nice I guess for you to enjoy and in general it's, it's nice to enjoy at least one simple thing and in the second part of this video which is I think a bit more long than usually yeah it's, it's kind of long video today um, there is already the finishing touches on the river rapids even though I'm not quite happy with how they turned out in general um, because like the I'm quite sh I'm quite happy with how the station looks and stuff but um, there is like this this little thing before the um, rapids go into the station I needed to change that a tiny bit because um, I had a very very small station to make it just look like a fisherman's hut but the problem is if you go upwards just before the station you can just have three rafts in the station because you can't just uh, stock them up um, below because the ramp is basically the, the the definition piece what defines how many rafts you can I have in so as soon as you have like an incline um, before the station you are only able to put in rafts until this incline. So I needed to change that and, and put a little roundabout in before then the rafts go up again and so I could store a lot more a lot more uh, rafts in the station which is also good to make the yeah, kind of um, capacity of that ride uh, on a realistic scale. So that's what I did and um, this ended up in a little bit messy way of kind of making the station way too big for my likes but I needed to do it that way and this is also why I tried to make all the things a little bit more subtle than usually and, and make it look not too bulky which turned out to be working but um, kind of the blend, uh, like the transition between the actual river rapids in the water and the station itself, I'm not entirely happy with, but I'm, I'm looking into doing that in, a live, in the live stream I already talked about last episode. Um, again, so just to make sure that this is um, something that really looks nice and the way I want to look it. Um, yeah, but anyways, we are um, in this episode, as I said, building the bridge, which uh, I think turned out to look very nice in the end uh, we definitely have to destroy this this bridge a bit more as soon as I'm back from uh, my uh, little holiday season um, because it looks way too tidy and nice um, and this is broken down area it's not broken down it's affected by black death but um, I would think that people haven't had the time to repair stuff that has been broken after a storm or whatever so it's not actually broken but a few pieces fell off and that's what I want to, to just show but yeah so um, let's read out the last medieval fact um, I, I did this in the last three episodes so uh, today you are getting another one and uh, this is yeah a very nice one because um, I didn't know that I really thought the way it is said but um, yeah so here's the fact they didn't believe the world was flat. So most people probably know this already. I didn't. Um, along with the fact that Viking helmets did not have horns. I didn't know that either. No, I did. Um, both are bits of Victorian myth-making about the period, along with the idea that the Lord had the right to sleep one night with any newly wedded woman. Um, damn. Okay, unfortunate. What makes studying medieval history fascinating is that you have to grapple with both the puzzle of extracting information from difficult and often fragmented surviving records and the challenge of constantly checking your own thinking for assumptions and inherent stereotypes. Nice, but how did they not believe it was flat now? It's not set here. What damn? Okay, so we go out with the last fact that the world wasn't flat uh, in their in their perspectives. Oh, that's damn. No, no, that's, that's bad. Let's, let's read out another one because I... I don't know, I... Hmm. Well... 
Okay, well, then let's take this at, um, as well, because I think uh, it was really not satisfying, the one with uh, the world flat and else. Um, they had a renaissance and invented experimental science. This is really nice, because I talked about that while the monastery uh, episode. So this is basically, I knew that, but this is a nice kind of um, summary of what I talked about in the episode where I started the monastery. So, here, here we go. When people talk about the Renaissance, the Renaissance, they usually mean the very self-conscious embrace of classical models in literature, art, architecture and learning, uh, found, uh, learning found at the end of the Middle Ages. This is usually taken to be one of the ways in which we moved from medieval to early modern ways of thinking. But in fact, medieval intellectuals also had a renaissance, or renaissance um, of classical learning and the rhetoric. This was in the 12th century and dependent particularly on the transmission of works by Aristotle, Aristotle and the other classical authors via Arabic philosophers and translators. One of the outcomes was to prompt an uncrying and reflective approach to the physical world, and it led Roger Bacon, oh Bacon, hmm, delicious, sorry, uh, living from 1214 to 1294, wow, he lived long for that age, among others, to think uh, about how one might observe and experiment with the physical world to learn more about it. Um, yeah, basically that's what I talked about in this episode already, and I think that's a really satisfying fact to end this with. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, or you will enjoy it, because there's a lot of this uh, episode left. Um, and we're gonna see each other in the next one, and this will be the next one, will be when I'm back already. So uh, please make sure to leave all the comments down below in the comment section now, because I'm going to answer to all of it next one, uh, in the next one, and uh, yeah. Happy to have you here and uh, can't wait to see you in the next one. Until then, have a great time and make sure to like the video if you liked it. Also to subscribe if you haven't already and you like the stuff you see. And um, yeah, then we see each other in the next one. Bye bye.
Thank you.